Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast roundup. We've gone from the sublime to the ridiculous because we had amazing audio last week and this week he's on his phone, but don't let that put you off because it's a ram-packed week kicking off with Formula One. we got W Series, WEC, World Touring Cars, British GTs and NASCAR. Um, but of course, uh, in like-minded, but in true fashion, we're going to kick off with Formula One in Miami. Welcome to Miami. Oh. My goodness. Was it really Miami? I, I didn't know it was Miami. Was it Miami, Miami, Miami? Oh, I was so put off by the hype. I always, oh, I don't know, it just, just, it's going too far. It's American ownership. And a lot of people in the UK were really fed up. But just I mean, every journalist, TV presenter, that's sort of on the payroll in some way from Liberty, obviously, you know, worked as commentator, they were just overdoing it. I got so tired of it all. The BBC Five Lives um, pairing, you know, they were talking about, what was it, the... Uh, the heart and soul of Formula One, the biggest event ever. I've not heard of Monaco Grand Prix, the Indy 500 that has 350,000 spectators one year. And then talk about the guest list. Oh, what a weekend, the guest list at Zabar. And I think, you know, the, the, the marina, the, oh gosh, we just wanted to get on with the racing, <laughs> which sadly, after all the hype, it didn't turn out to be that exciting. Yeah, it was a bit dull, wasn't it? I mean, but I think the most exciting thing, bar none, was Martin Brundle's grid walk because these guests, he didn't have a clue who they were. He, they didn't have a clue who he was. And it was without question TV gold. If you didn't see it, please watch it on be available somewhere. But he was literally going up to the wrong people. It wasn't his fault. He was told by the little voice in his ear. Um, oh, no. TV gold. I, I loved it. What a, what a brilliant addition that is to, uh, to Form 1 coverage. I think even you'll agree that, that was good fun. Yeah, I, mean, well, I missed that grim walk. I don't watch so much anymore. So I, I, I better check if it was that good. But with the race, to be fair, Max Verstappen, I'm in a masterclass, you know, let's hand big laurels. I mean, he's, he's the classic Verstappen, the bold outside move at the first turn. Uh, obviously, sights on the dirty side of the grid, which helped Max, you know, get a bit of a launch. Uh, but the, the trademark bold move around the outside, seven laps later, took the lead. And then at the end, you know, really holding off well, obviously couldn't get his tyres going as quick as Leclerc when the, when the pace car went in. So you have to hand it to Max, a real masterclass. Uh, I love it. The, the only bit about Red Bull, they go on about, you know, they now talk about the Red Bull being such a, a slippery car. Their error is so good, the low drag Red Bull. When Mercedes were quick in a straight line, it was always, oh, their engine's more powerful than ours. You know, we're losing half a second of the straight, but uh, whatever. They've got a quick car on the straight, they've got a quick driver. Um, so pretty much a masterclass from Max. Uh, the number two drivers both sort of dropping back a bit. Uh, poor old Valtteri Bottas looked like he might have a fifth place. Great weekend for him in qualifying, but he made a mistake after the restart and uh, lost his place for the two, the two recovering Mercedes who, you know, had a weird weekend. I mean, that car, you know, George Russell, what, he was fastest in FP2 or something, wasn't it? And then, you know, he's no way slower in qualifying and they can't work out when this thing porpoise is and when it's not going to porpoise. Um, it's really weird what these cars are like at the moment. It's funny. It, it, it is funny. Where are Mercedes going? I mean, you know, it, it was quite flattering, I think, the fifth and sixth, because like you said, Bottas had a big moment after the restart. And the restart really was the only thing that made it interesting. It was such a a snooze fest after all the right oh, no. and then the restart it was exciting it was brilliant to see max and charles going head to head max yeah. is the real deal there's no question about that what a brilliant yeah. ride from him I, I quite enjoyed the track i mean you know testing and qualifying they're all spinning off you know to show us what a challenge it was a couple hit the wall hard and ocon was complaining about the concrete box i mean it was a very slow fairly slow corner he crashed out and he went in sideways but um he wanted his tech pro and then the track started, you know, a lot of rubber offline. They didn't like that. So it wasn't perfect, of course, from once we actually got into the race. street circuit, Tiff. That's what a street circuit is. Don't they all want to race at Monte Carlo? It's the same thing. You know what most of the drivers said uh, prior to the race, and then you throw the toys out of the pram when you don't do very well, and it's a, another racing driver excuse. But most of the drivers said the track was brilliant. Lewis Hamilton said the track's brilliant. He didn't particularly like yeah. the campaign, but he thought that he loved the track. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, but, but, but all the hype, you know, the, the commentators, when they came and first came out for FP1, the commentators said, you know, well, there's packed 800,000 packed grandstands watching them. And, and then the camera showed about, you know, a quarter of the field were there. It was, I, just, I just got bored with everybody trying to hype everything up. 
Um, and then the race thing with the snooze fest. But I actually quite like the look of the race show. A lot of people complaining. But yeah, you said it. I think Lewis Hamilton liked it. One of the shames, poor old Mick Schumacher wiping out Vettel when he was about to get his first ever point. So that was a bit of a shame to see him. Um, Alex Albon, though, started against the Brits, coming up to get another point for Williams. Um, McLaren again off the pace, not, I mean, they go up and down the grid, you know, from podiums to nowheres, um, which is a bit of a show. Of course, with, with Lando lose, losing his tar, that really finished off a bad weekend for him. Well, it's funny, social media jumped onto the back of that and said the reason they did so badly is because they were treating it like a bit of a circus. They were hanging out with James Corden. He was the uh, he was the official McLaren ambassador for the weekend, I think. Oh, no, was he? Oh, yeah. my goodness. Know, all, the cra- all the fuss about their crash helmets they paint up. and You can't even see the crash helmet within the cars mm-hmm. apart from the onboard cameras. Well, I did quite like Lando's, Lando's uh, basketball. Oh, they were, they were quite... fun. Also, social media are kicking off about Christian Horner. They're saying that... They, uh, Sky Sports, Christian Horner must be on the payroll because he's on there more than a lot of the commentators because it literally cuts to him on, let's go to Christian. What do you think about Mercedes tyres, Christian? What do you think about the weather, Christian? What do you think about... So so that was kicking off a little bit on social media. Other than that, nothing much happening on social media. Everyone was quite pleased for Max, I think. And of course, the W Series was supporting their first race of the year. And again, the commentaries. I mean... It's awesome. This is not just W Series, I might say. You know, so they're coming out with this huge crowd for the W Series. Everyone's looking. And when they got on the grid, there was there was three people in the grandstand. There was nobody in the grandstand virtually. Um, but to be fair to W Series, this happens in Formula Three and Formula Two. I'm down hosting corporate guests at Monaco Grand Prix, and uh, I'm there in the morning. We're having sort of bucks fizz and panic pastries and stuff and champagne. And, you know, sort of nine o'clock until, I guess, it was four to three. Now, your grandstand's three minutes walk, you know, four to three. Uh, more champagne, you know, half an hour there. Four to two, now, do you want to watch the four to two? Uh, more champagne. You know, they're, they're awful, those corporate guests. Then eventually you say, well, driver's parade. Drive, oh, they all rush out to go watch the driver's parade with 20 little figures standing on the back of a lorry. So, but anyway, the W Series, and I don't know where we're going with the W Series. I mean, Jamie Chadwick had two more wins. And, you know... <laughs> If she keeps winning, I don't think it's, it's good for the series because she, when she goes out in the real world and race against young men, uh, she's not on the pace. You know, she gets beaten quite easily. So if Jamie's the best woman and nobody can beat her, then where it's all going, I'm not sure. It's entertaining. It's a sideshow. Um, it was a show for Alice Powell, leading Brit. She stalled on the grid and then crashed. And um, Was it Marta Garcia? Who was on pole? What do you mean Which leading the- Brit? Jamie Chabot was a leading Brit. She won it. Both. I'm leading from chasing, but I'm into the chasing pack. <laughs> but look, I mean, all the chasing pack were the same. I think the two stars I picked out was um, Neria, Neria Marti. I'm not sure how to pronounce Mer- Neria. Uh, she's this young Spanish girl. She was the best rookie last year. She's only 20 years old. Um, she was one on pole who stalled I like Alice. I'm so sorry for her. She's in pole position. Amazing. The, the, the best best finish before then was third place, I think, ever. Yeah. And, uh, and she, but she got second in the second race. Second. So she finished second in the second race. So that was... Yeah. Uh, and the first race was quite entertaining. They were all over the place. Um, I felt sorry for Emma Kimmelainen. She's another regular challenger to Jamie. And she, she'd she gone up there, got the lead, done a really good race in the first there race. There should be and, something in W Series to say. I mean, Jamie Chadwick, respect, because she's obviously incredibly talented. Yeah. But there should be something in there to say, once you've won it twice or two years, after two years... Well, that was the rule. That, it was the law, but they, they somehow let her back in again. Why? Quick Why? shout out to Abby Pulling of the young girls that, that were challenging and moving up. She's obviously a talent for the future. Uh, she only qualified ninth, but she came fifth in the first race, sixth in the second race. So there are a couple of new new names moving up the grid, but really not enough new names because uh, we're not discovering any sort of you know faster female talent, which is what we hope we'll find in W Series in the years to come. I was having a chat with Jack Goff on Friday. He I, I met up with Jack on Friday and. Uh, he, and he didn't. He wasn't any. He wasn't disparaging or derogatory about these girls at all. But he cannot race because he can't get sponsorship. And he's an incredibly talented young <laughs> driver. But he cannot cannot race. A BTCC driver, for those who don't know, Jack. Um, and it must just be such a kick in the teeth for these, because because no disrespect to Jamie, uh, but I think that Jack was probably going to beat you in a in in. A, I don't. Well, know. yeah, he probably would. But so, I mean that. I mean, gotta, I'm trying to be diplomatic here, Tiff, but but why why are they getting over? Yeah. If, if 
I was prepared to sponsor women, then that's the sponsor's choice. I don't see where they're getting their money back from. It's a huge financial investment, that W series. So it's an amazing series. But anyway, I mean, and like we've always said, and like we've always said, if it brings uh, girls into new new girls into the sport, fantastic. And that's that's the idea. But the the point is, we it should be getting more girls in karting. But I haven't yet seen any sort of information to show whether there are more girls getting karting licenses at the age of eight or nine. Who knows? Can, um, I, just mention, can I just mention before we move on to um, uh, Spa, WC Spa, Jess Hawkins as well. She had a, a really good... Yeah. Look at her. Jess had her best result. She finished second. She's a lot of fun, but didn't have such a good second race. Um, but of course, Kim Alina, it was a shame on that restart. She tried too quick at the restart. Uh, half lost control coming up the start finish line and the pack was on top of her and then they're all hitting each other and uh, again Jamie is Jamie uses her experience she looks supremely confident out front and she doesn't get flustered I mean, she's a very very solid driver I'm sure she'll have a great career in you know Le Mans uh, GT racing that sort of thing where some of the girls are getting drives um, but you know it's not that we're not finding a female Grand Prix driver yet we will. OK, let's go to Spa, where the weather was typical Spa fashion. It was wet, it was dry, it was all sorts of uh, thing going on for the World Endurance Championship uh, over in Belgium. Unbelievable conditions, the second half of the race. But I mean, it's still at the moment, we're still waiting for the next year, you know, when the Porsches are joining and Ferrari are coming soon and all the other, it's all kicking off. There's only four hypercars at Spa. Uh, Alpine was, it's all about this balance of power with the Toyotas, they've got the hybrids and Alpine haven't got the same systems and so Alpine who won at Sebring were given a peg back with the balance of performance, so Glickenhaus was an on pole, which is great for this American uh, private team to be on pole um, uh, but then the, the Toyotas soon worked their way, one Toyota actually packed up and stopped working upset itself, didn't want to go so it's not, you know, it's not that exciting, that World Endurance Championship at the top at the moment. You know, four hypercars followed by, what, 15 Arica LMP2s, uh, only five GT Pro cars. But it's quite a good race, Porsche, Ferrari, one Corvette. Um, James Collada, one of the star races in the Ferrari, held on for grim death to win the GT Pro, um, battling against the Porsche. But uh, the surviving Toyota Julie won, which, of course, is good news for Mike Conway, the British driver in that car with the Camus Kovacci, and Jose Maria Lopez. Um, so they finished first ahead of the Alpine. And then Glickenhaus, unfortunately, went and had a last minute tyre change. They went back onto treaded tyres or the other way around in the last half, and they therefore dropped back to ninth. Um, when Harry Ticknell also, and Sam Prio, part of the team that won the GTM, you know, what were they in a Porsche? So that's um, uh, Andy Prio's son. So it's good to see a new Prio uh, on the world sports car scene, albeit in a GT car. But they were very close finishes. I just forget. I mean, Collado won by half a second after the, the end of the race, and um, Ticknell held off to win by one and a half seconds. So, again, the GT racing is always the most exciting in these events. And I always wondered at one stage, instead of doing hypercars, we should go on GT only at the ball and taking it back to the 60s, you know, when we had you know, GT 40s racing against Ferraris. But no, we're having hybrid hypercars. It, was, it wasn't so exciting World Touring Cars at Poe. Oh, these! I mean, you know, I'm not a fan of the new the shopping trolley world. No, championship. I don't oh. mind. I don't mind them. They certainly look good and sound good, but it's just it's just yeah, world championship opening yeah. race of the season reverse grid. Yeah. So the tenth best driver sat on pole position, uh, Nesta Girolami, Honda driver from Argentina, and drove round pole where you can't overtake and won the first round of the world championship with a reverse grid. But don't you uh, don't you think that I mean Formula One? I think everybody would agree is the pinnacle of motorsport. So don't you think people look at Formula One and think, yeah, okay, they they've never done reverse grip, um, so that's probably the way we should go. But it's no. just it's for, just rewarding people that no. is rewarding the poorer drivers. Meritocracy, mm. world championships, the best should be at the top. Yeah, I that's agree. The way it should be. I mean, Norman Miklitz, who was the fastest driver, <laughs> didn't have a good weekend. Because, of course, he had to start 10th, so the fastest drivers at like 10th couldn't overtake anyone. He got up to 9th, I think, after a couple of drivers dropped out in the first race. Then the second race, classic touring car driver, led off pole, didn't make the best start. Uh, the Italian Attila Tassi came up the inside, and Miklitz decided to close the door when the other car was already there, punted himself sideways in front of everybody. So he was out of the race, and... Uh, the second race was won by his teammate, actually, inherited the win, Miguel Azcona, uh, to another Honda, took the win because he was then leading. What's so, Poe like, other than, other than being very, 
other than being very narrow, what's Poe like? Very narrow. <laughs> well, it's a huge <laughs> Formula 2 car. I never raced there. It was one I missed out with the Formula 2 cars in the 70s before ground effect came in. were awesome around there. You know? um, yeah. But the Thomas the Touring cars, because they're front wheel drive, they're not one car through a corner. It's just dull to watch. You know, there's no corrective lock going on. Uh, and, you know, you end up, the push to pass is the only way they get through and bang into each other. And it's, it's, I mean, you can't have a world championship with two little sprint races, one of them in reverse grid. Get back on top. I mean, 500 kilometres, two drivers, beefy cars. OK. In fact, um, GT3 is far better. We were back in Britain, we had a nice round of the British GT Championship, three-hour race. Uh, which, although that had a lot of falling off and crashes in the first lap, was a, a really, by the end, there's a classic battle between the Mercedes tracking down a Lamborghini. But of course, the Lamborghini came out first because, of course, it was a Lamborghini prepared by, oh, uh, what was Barwell that? Motors, maybe? Oh, Barwell Motorsport. Yeah, who's, who's the corporate director? Oh, Chris Needell. Yeah. So <laughs> my brother's team had a great one. It was a fantastic race because uh, they were being really big under pressure from Mercedes for the last half an hour of the race. So it's entertaining. It's always that GT3s are just entertaining to watch because there's such a mix of makes and models and shapes and sizes. And of course, half the field GT4. I mean, it is one area where, you know, drivers can get into long distance racing and, and progress their careers. So all big, big up for this GT. Well, what's going on in that room of yours? Sounds very noisy. You're a very famous motorsport manufacturer today. <laughs> Malik. It's not Malik now, it's the RML Group which used to be Rain Malik Racing, as I'm learning, is I'm about to drive one of their, well, their first ever road car, which I'm very looking forward to as soon as we finish this. It's got a V12 engine. Very nice. Um, and um, last but so not least, the other race Aston. about, yeah, if, you, if you couldn't afford $850 or whatever it was to be one of the 80,000 very, very rich people lounging by swimming pools and pretend marinas and on pretend beaches and probably spending more time drinking free booze than watching the racing. Uh, you could have been at Darlington, one of the famous old ovals where there was a hell of a race. Um, again, you have, the, you have the likes of, you know, stars like Kyle Larson spinning out while racing, Kyle Busch crashing while racing, Ross Chastain, you know, on a restart, losing control. You will see the best drivers right on the edge in those oval races and, and going off and losing control. Uh, but it ended in a very controversial way. Um, William Byron, one of the famous uh, teammates with Carl Larson um, in his Chevrolet, was leading, he was being caught by Joey Logano. Joey Logano has a nasty reputation for being a dirty little beep, beep, beep. And I mean, coming into turn three on the last lap, I mean, he just probably didn't break. He just thumped the back of William Byron, who's leading, sent him up into the wall, smashed him into the wall, uh, went on to win and punched the air and thought he was the best thing since sliced bread. Um, Byron, afterwards, obviously, the interviews thought he was a complete idiot and a threat. And a lot of people think that way about Joe. He's, he's, he really does do these last corner hits harder than anybody else in NASCAR. And he always says that, oh, during the race, bar, he put me up there for I gave him back what he gave me. He seems to actually justify his own brain. But I don't think many of the fellow NASCAR drivers would uh, agree with him. So Joey Legato won under a very controversial manner. That's it. That's it. But this weekend, well, oh, it's not much happening. You've got IndyCar tiff, which... Not much happening. <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love to see IndyCar go around that Miami course. You know, it would have had 28 cars or something that have been real overtaking and real stuff. I would love to see IndyCars there. They're at um, the famous Mid-Ohio. No, no, Imster's Mid-Ohio. They're at the IndyCar uh, road course because we're in the month of May. The whole month of May used to be warming up, testing, qualifying, just for the for the 500 race around the Oval. But they now introduced this uh, halfway through May, the road course race, so that's this weekend. And of course, the Indy 500 is in, in two weeks' time. So Indy, Indy cars at Indy. Uh, IMSA, great sports car racing around the mid-Ohio course. It's a fabulous, challenging road course. No room for error, barriers everywhere, grass at the edge of the track. Um, but MotoGP, a lot of our fans love, of course, if you're in France, but they're around the stupid Le Mans Bugatti circuit, if it's still called the Bugatti circuit, though it is. Horrible little 10 hairpins and about one fast chicane. Uh, the bikes are entertaining there, but to me, it's not the best track to see them on. And then we mustn't forget Formula E, never forget Formula E. They've got a double header in their, in their city centre track, which is around an airport apron outside of the Berlin. Um, so that's for Marie, 
But if you're in Britain, there's nothing better than to go to Brands Hatch this weekend for the British Touring Car Championship. A fabulous weekend of motorsport promised down at Brands. Okay, good stuff. And uh, go and enjoy your £1 million uh, car with the Mallet Group, my RML. Oh, well. I'll, I'll, I'll be slaving away here doing some work, proper work. Yeah, exactly, get on with it, get on with it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us Thanks, all. Everyone. See you next week.